Hi, I'm Jacqueline. And I'm Courtney. And this is Caffeinated Crimes. Welcome back to just another week. You know, it's struggle is always it's late guys and by late i mean 8 24 p.m so pretty it's much late <laughs> yeah um but exciting news it is by the time you hear this the first tuesday in june so happy pride month to all of our lgbtq plus listeners and followers like we love you all and Every day of the year, I hope you're flying your rainbow flag, and but especially this month. And yeah. Yes. Happy Pride Month. I hope you guys have some fun activities planned. I know the last few years with COVID, you know, parades and events and things have been a little less, you know, not, not quite as, as grand as they normally would be. So maybe this year there's some hope on the horizon for some, some bigger and more fun events and hopefully you have all kinds of fun stuff going on. Yeah, I know at the time of this recording, um, not at the not this recording, the time of the release, <laughs> one of them. I don't know. Time of the release <laughs> this Saturday, my neighborhood is having like a huge pride festival. They did it last nice. year too. They're gonna have a bunch of vendors, a bunch of uh, one of the restaurants is gonna have a drag brunch. It's gonna be a good time, and I'm very excited. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I need to see what fun events are happening around me. I mean, you know, in Richmond, I'm sure there are plenty of things. So just need to see what's out there and, you know, hop on over there and have a good time. Yep. And speaking of not having a good time, um, we are back to our mass shooting um, intros that we sort of got away from. And by that, I mean, they probably weren't headline news. So we didn't hear about them, not that we got away from them as in they weren't happening because, Mm -hmm. They happen every day that we don't hear about. Um, But as of the day that we are recording this, which is May 24th, there was a shooting at an elementary school in Texas. Um, So obviously they are always bad, always horrific. The elementary school ones are just, these are babies, you know? Um, So at this time, at least 14 children and one teacher are dead. We are hearing reports of maybe 18. Um, Again, this literally just happened today. Um, So I know some people were sent to the hospital that were wounded. So we're still waiting to get more information about them. Um, The gunman is also dead. He was an 18 year old high school student. um, and He allegedly shot his grandmother before going into the elementary school. I haven't heard if he shot himself or if he was killed. Um, it's all just kind of coming out. Cause I also know when the 14 number came out, like Kevin was seeing it on Twitter that the governor had had a press conference. Um, but like news stations were still saying two. And so it's one of those things right now where it's just kind of like, I'm pretty sure the governor said that he, the gunman was dead, but Mm -hmm. I have no other idea what the details of that would be. Yeah. Yeah. Just very sad. And speaking of sad and shootings, um, there was another shooting in Buffalo, New York. Um, a literal piece of shit, a uh, white man decided, I don't even know if I can call him a man. I think he was 18. I think he was a, a child in more <laughs> ways than one. Mm-hmm. Um, he, uh, decided that he wanted to target a black neighborhood and, kill black people basically, um, in a local grocery store. Um, and so he had been talking about this online for a long time. He streamed it on Twitch and he just went in and shot people. I did also hear there was like a white guy in the store and he was like, no, I'm not going to shoot you. Mm. I just, it's just like (sighs) so tragic. And one podcast I listened to was kind of talking about this area is also kind of a food desert area that there's Mm -hmm. not a lot of grocery stores and now how terrified must you be to try and go back to that one grocery store um yeah it's just tragic so we're gonna say the victims names now um it was roberta drury margus morrison andre mcneil aaron salter geraldine talley celestine cheney hayward patterson Catherine Massey, Pearl Young, and Ruth Whitfield. So they all lost their life because this piece of shit decided that black people didn't matter to him. And 
he had a following online who all agreed with him. Like it's a big issue. And if people say racism isn't real prime example, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's just, yeah, I, I have no words and it's very, um, I don't know if ironic is the best word, but the episode that we're doing today, we did not plan (laughs) based on this recent Mm -hmm. event. Um, but as we talk about in the episode, it is still happening today, as is evidenced by this very recent example that happened after we started working on this episode. So just horrific and disgusting and devastating. And I don't know, as a society, as a country, as a world, we just have to do better somehow, yeah. somewhere. It's been a very bleak few weeks with the whole um possible supreme court happenings um these shootings that have been happening every day um i don't know what has to change to make any of this better the baby formula shortage where people literally Mm -hmm. cannot feed their infants it's just so many things right now it's a lot it's a lot um and just in general you know things are going up um there is still a war in Ukraine just because we're not talking about it anymore. There is still shit going on over there. Like it's just a lot. It's a bleak world and our episode's just going to depress you further. (laughs) I know. I feel like we need to insert some kind of um, happy, funny anecdote here. I can tell a funny story of what happened to me today. Please do. Okay. So today um, I was on my hot girl walk um not fully a hot girl walk because Kevin was with me so he's kind of dampering it I'm just kidding. Um, so we usually do around like the same general kind of path that we know from apartment to that point and back is about three miles so we'll do that three or four times a week um and this time we were walking and there was this big tow truck and we'd seen him kind of pull over, let a car pass. And then he starts backing up and he is about to smash into a car, like smash, like run him over. Cause this is a like massive tow truck, like a long tow truck. Um, also side note, this episode is going to be a video for Patreons <laughs> and they're getting full hand description. I was just thinking about that because I'm like, Courtney's over here with the <laughs> long tow truck. In case you didn't yeah. know what the word long meant, she's giving you a visual um, well, description. Well, you know, sometimes you have the tow trucks that'll tow like cars, but yeah. this is one where you could put like three or four cars on the bed. <laughs> like it's a long one. So he starts backing up to go into this driveway and he almost just runs, like smashes this car over. Um, and so Kevin and I were like, holy shit, mm-hmm. that guy about just lost his life. <laughs> So then I see the car, like he was honking, honking, honking. So then I see the car still stopped. And I was like, oh, he's probably going to yell at that guy. And I was like, I get it. I'd yell at him too. Miss run me over. Then he gets out of his car and he's double burden it and just going, fuck you, motherfucker. Go fuck yourself. Like getting in squat position to a screen. Oh my God. <laughs> and Kevin and I are just like, so I stop because I'm like, I might have to call the cops. Like, is this guy about to pull a gun out of his car right. and try to shoot this tow truck driver? And Kevin and I are like kind of laughing it off because there's nothing like, it's just this guy kind of going yeah. AJ. Like he must have had a bad day. And I kind of get it because he probably did almost just lose his life from this tow truck driver. Yeah. So there was another couple on a walk in front of us who had also turned around and they start kind of walking back towards it. And we're like, whatever. So then the boyfriend or whatever, and this couple starts yelling at the guy who's yelling, going like, (laughs) get the fuck back in your car. And I'm just like, we about to have a three-way fight. Yeah. And I'm just like, me and Kevin are like. (laughs) Also, can I just say how I'm like, we need a happy, funny anecdote. And Courtney's like, let me tell you about when I almost saw this guy got run over by a tow truck and then got into an argument. But he did. (laughs) So it's a happy ending. <laughs> it's a happy ending. He got back. And thankfully, he didn't hear the guy. I don't think who was yelling at him to get back in the car because he mm-hmm. did just get back on his car and drive away. But literally, I mean, it's kind of funny. He was seriously, I mean, he was almost like squat position to mm-hmm. hold himself so he could scream at this guy. And I was just like, 
And yeah, this guy going, get back in your car. I'm like, dude, just sit down. You ain't no hero. Just mind your own business. Like you don't need to like, no. If you see someone pissed off, why do you think yelling at them is going to get them to calm down? So Kevin and I were just like, (laughs) yeah, he's not like physically attacking him where you're like, oh, as a good citizen, I should probably like try to step in Mm -hmm. and help this person. It's like, just, he's just yelling. Just mind your own business. It's okay. It's all good. (laughs) And that's the thing. And that's why like Kevin and I stopped and we're watching. We're kind of like monitoring, like, do I need to get 911 on the phone? Mm -hmm. Like, is this about to be really bad? And then this guy's just inserting himself. And I was like, Kevin, I am so glad that you were not that type of person who just inserts himself when it is not needed because I'd be so pissed off. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're yelling at Kevin to stop yelling at the guy to stop yelling at the guy. And it's just a whole vicious Well, cycle. the girl was like on the guy's side and she was like, well, he had his brakes on. He was like breaking. And I'm like, he almost got ran over. Literally yeah, like, like the guy just is- took out his whole entire car. I get him yelling. Yeah. Should he have stepped out of his car? <laughs> yeah, he should have just kept going. But you know what? I don't know what that guy was going through that day. But clearly he needed that scream. <laughs> it was pretty fucking funny. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Well, I don't really know if that cheered you up, but uh, I thought it was funny because <laughs> everyone was okay. So. <laughs> oh boy. So our sources for this week are zendproject.org, blackpast.org, um, a few articles from facinghistory.org, um, an article from History Engine with uh, richmond.edu, and the human rights committee.org, and also a senate.gov article. So we do want to give a trigger warning here. There is racial violence and there is discussions of rape. That's something you don't want to deal with and you don't want to listen to right now. Completely understand. Mm -hmm. Skip to the end and hear our perk of the week and then move on about your day and hopefully it gets better. Yep. So from May 1st to 3rd, 1866, 46 Black Americans were killed in Memphis, Tennessee by both police officers and white civilians. At least five women were raped and over 100 buildings were destroyed by arson. This became known as the Memphis Riot or Memphis Massacre of 1866. So President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863, calling for the end of slavery. As we know, this didn't really just effectively end slavery. It's not like he had this nice speech at Gettysburg and then was like, everyone was like, sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, Prezi. That's that's not what happened because according to all the textbooks I read in history class growing up, that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, whenever someone puts a law in or says something, everyone just automatically follows it. You know, that's it. The end. Yeah. There were many exceptions to this, not to mention states that just didn't follow the new regulations. Um, Previous slave owners were found to be holding freed enslaved people on their property and still forcing them to work for them in terrible conditions. And they were beaten or lynched for disobeying. So even though it was like you were supposed to, to, you know, free all of the people that you enslaved. Um, they didn't. They were like, no, we're still going to hold you here. They're here by choice. Yeah. And as we know, with the holiday of Juneteenth, some places didn't even get the news until much later. So mm-hmm. these enslaved people didn't even know that they were supposed to be free. So like, yeah, this law was put into place. But if no one tells you that, no one's enforcing it. So you just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, this was like before social media or probably even like widespread newspapers in some of these locations because you have such a big plantation it's not like you know you were having that much communication especially not if you weren't like the owner so Mm -hmm. and the owners could very easily throw away whatever communication Mm -hmm. they did get and you know most enslaved people could not read or write so if anything written came in they wouldn't know what it said anyway yeah And although slavery was on its way to legally ending, Black people were far from having the same rights as white people. In 1865 and 1866, government in Southern states enacted the Black Codes, which indicated they planned to reestablish slavery under another name. Um, This legislation forbade freed enslaved people from working any occupation except farming and menial service. Um, They required special license to do any other type of work, and Black people could also be punished for insulting gestures, seditious speeches, and the crime of walking off of a job. 
Um, and one Mississippi law was enacted in November and required all black people to have a job before the second Monday in January. So they're like, go find a job. If you don't have a job, you're in trouble. Yeah. So riots were staged often around this time with police officers claiming black people were rioting as an excuse to murder them. Sound familiar? Mm, unfortunately. So General Carl Schurz wrote, the emancipation of the slave is submitted to only in so far as chattel slavery in the old form could not be kept up. But although the freedman is no longer considered the property of the individual master, he's considered the slave of the society. Which I feel like was such a like perfect way to put that, that it's like, oh, like Mm -hmm. black people aren't owned anymore, but also like we still see you as inferior. So like you're still a slave to this world, Mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. And obviously racial tensions were high at this time, especially in the South. And in Memphis, Tennessee, black soldiers were given the responsibility of patrolling large portions of the city at the end of the Civil War. And many white citizens did not like this and they couldn't stand that black people had any authority like in their city. They're like, oh, how dare you? How dare you? They're clutching their pearls. (laughs) I'm not going to listen to what this formerly enslaved man has to tell me as far like what? I would never. What? A soldier who fought in a war? No. No. Anyway. (laughs) On the afternoon of May 1st, 1866, a white police officer attempted to arrest a black ex-soldier in Memphis, and around 50 black men showed up to stop the police from taking him to jail. Of course, both sides say the other shot first. Um, Either way, violence quickly erupted. And at first, police were systematically killing Black soldiers, but then began breaking into homes and killing other Black people and destroying Black schools and churches as well. And white Northerners who were working as missionaries and teachers in Black schools were murdered too. Memphis policemen and firefighters were openly participating in this mass murder. So it wasn't like black citizens could just like try to go to the police to help them. It's like, who do you even ask for help? Mm -hmm. Um, And they obviously weren't going to help them put out of the, put out any of the fires in black neighborhoods either. This is the 1800s. It's probably a lot of wood and just Mm -hmm. going up quickly. I mean, the can't remember what year that Chicago fire happened, Mm -hmm. but I assume similar to that where it's just like, just spreads so rapidly and there's nothing you could do about it most of the time, even if you're actively trying to. And then obviously here you have firefighters who are starting these fires. So of course they're not going to help you put them out. So U.S. Army Commander George Stoneman ordered the Black soldiers of the 3rd United States Colored Heavy Heavy Artillery Regiment back to Fort Pickering, which was just outside the city. And on May 2nd, Memphis Mayor John Park refused to request state or federal assistance. Then on the afternoon of May 3rd, now three days into this mass murder of Black citizens all over Memphis, General Stoneman declared martial law and sent both Black and white troops into the city to end the murders. An order was finally restored on this third night. A congressional committee arrived that month to investigate the incident, and their report fought for increasing Reconstruction policies and endorsed the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, which would grant citizenship to formerly enslaved people. It emphasized how vulnerable Black people were in the South at the end of the war. However, the report attempted to minimize the issue by saying only Irish white Southerners were a threat to Black people. Um, And... This report said that Memphis police force were overwhelmingly Irish, and there was a big competition for manual labor jobs between the Black and Irish populations. Um, and it's just kind of like pretending that both sides particip- like, participate in this riot instead of it just being like a mass murder of Black citizens mm-hmm. by both Irish white people and non-Irish white people. So they're like, oh, it's just this rivalry between Black people and Irish people. And it's like, no, it's Irish and other white people just killing all of these Black people. (laughs) Yeah. Then after three days, 46 Black citizens and two white citizens were killed. And one of the white people was killed by accident. And the other was a policeman who shot himself. So five women were raped and a total of 285 people were injured and over a hundred houses and buildings were burned down, including all four of the black schools and four black churches. 
So the five women who were raped in these riots actually became the first victims of sexual assault to testify in public. So they went before the congressional committee and testified about the crimes committed against them. 17-year-old Lucy Smith was staying with an older woman named Frances Thompson when the riots began. So they both woke up between 1 and 2 a.m. to a loud banging on the door. And when Frances opened the door, she saw seven men, two of whom were policemen. They barged into the home and demanded that the women make them supper. So they prepared them food and hoped that they would leave once they finished eating. Um, However, after they finished eating, they demanded a woman to sleep with. Um, Francis told them that they were not that sort of women and told them it was time for them to leave. And they said, quote, that didn't make a damn bit of difference and refused to leave. So one of them hit Francis in the face and started to choke her. And Lucy tried to run away out a window, but one of the men caught her and tried to choke her as well. So they drew pistols and said that they would shoot them and set the house on fire if they refused. Frances Thompson then said, quote, all seven of the men violated us too. Four of them had to do with me and the rest with Lucy. After raping both women, the men robbed the house and took clothes and cash, and they were in their home for nearly four hours. So three other unnamed women also testified before the congressional committee. Um, I could not find any details on these accounts or we would have Mm -hmm. included them here, Um, but there were a total of five women that did testify. Um, And again, they were the first uh, least known victims of sexual assault to testify in public in this way in the United States. So these testimonies did lead to the Reconstruction Acts, the Enforcement Acts, and the 14th Amendment. So the Reconstruction Acts of 1867, or Radical Reconstruction, aimed to promote healing and justice among the Black formerly enslaved community. So these laws called for the following. So the South was divided into five military districts and would be governed by military governors until acceptable state constitutions were written and approved by Congress. All males, excluding former Confederate leaders, were permitted to participate in the conventions that would form these new governments. New state constitutions were required to provide voting rights for all men, regardless of race, and states were required to ratify the 14th Amendment, which would guarantee citizenship to former enslaved people in order to be readmitted to the Union. So all of those were part of the Reconstruction Act. Mm -hmm. The Enforcement Act of May 1870 prohibited groups of people from banding together on public highways with the intention of violating citizens' constitutional rights. The two force acts that followed were also known as the Ku Klux Klan Acts. So the second force act became law in February of 1871 and placed administration of national elections under control of the federal government and gave federal judges and United States marshals rights to supervise polling places. So the third force act enacted in April 1871 gave the president the power to use armed forces to combat those who were trying to deny equal protection of the law to others. Unfortunately, the formal end of Reconstruction in 1877 paved the way for increased violence and retaliation against Black Americans. Um, Jim Crow laws in the South did start after Reconstruction and called for separate but equal facilities for Blacks and whites. Um, But of course, we know that these Black facilities were very far from equal. Yeah. So basically, all of that history lesson was just to recap that a lot of those things came into place directly after. Mm -hmm. this mass murder basically yeah and then if things could not get worse um 10 years after the memphis riots in 1876 francis thompson was arrested for cross-dressing because that was a crime then she was further sexually assaulted when the officers wanted to verify her genitalia and francis's status as a transgender woman was discovered and revealed So she was sent to a male prison and was forced to work in the city's chain gang where she was repeatedly abused, and she did die a few months after her release from dysentery. So those who opposed civil rights and reconstruction used her transgender identity to claim that she had never been sexually assaulted by the men in the Memphis riots because there's no way that these men would have raped a transgender woman. So I just want to make a note here that um, rape is about power and violence and not sex. Like that has nothing to do. It's not, it's not about sex. It's not about attraction. So like if they were not sexually attracted to a transgender woman does not mean that they would not have raped her because that's not what rape is about. Anyway. And she was also probably fucking beautiful. So they probably were attracted to her. So true. True. 
So none of the men responsible for the 46 murders and at least five rapes and countless assaults and fires were ever convicted of their crimes. In fact, many of the officers involved were compensated for their injuries that were sustained in an effort to suppress the riot, even though they were the ones who started the violence. But they got money because they were injured trying to, quote, end the violence. Because, again, all these Black people out here rioting Mm -hmm. is why these white people had to come in and stop everything, Mm -hmm. even though that's not what the fuck happened at all. Yeah. It's just... There's a real, real long fucked up history. And this is just like tip of the iceberg of stories Mm -hmm. that happened. Um, Yeah, I don't even really have words, to be honest. Like, and this is something that's just like never talked about. Like we were saying, like, you don't hear about this in your history books. And, you Mm -hmm. know, even after, you know, slavery, quote unquote, ended, they would still, you know, arrest black people especially black men for crimes and then basically make them slaves just under the premise of a prisoner oh they're Mm -hmm. just a prisoner so we have to have them come work like yep the like injustice just goes on for like a really long time and like it's just ridiculous like I just don't have words for it and I don't even think I'm the person who deserves to be speaking on Mm -hmm. it like of course we tell us tell these stories and everything um but we can't even like begin to understand um so yeah yeah um this one did come on my radar when we were working on the black pioneers in true crime episode because it talked about these five women who were the first to testify about their sexual assault um but we felt that the whole story needed to be told. We didn't want to pick out that little piece to include in that episode. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we tried as much as possible to, to make that episode more uplifting. And obviously this one is not, um, but the full story did deserve to be told. Um, That is why it's a little bit of a shorter episode, because again, this is all the information that is -hmm. available, at least that we can find. I'm sure in some records somewhere, there's more information that has been hidden and destroyed and whatever. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like but we need to do a black pioneers episode again yeah. part two for soon. sure mm-hmm. yeah definitely um but I feel like some of our shorter episodes are also our most important episodes because they're the stories mm-hmm. that aren't told as often so I'm sorry that it's a shorter episode but hopefully um you learned something that you did not know about before because I did not know about this before Y'all just got like three hours of Charles Manson. I think you're fine with a shorter episode. <laughs> like we we've heard enough of your voice. You can just you could just yeah. So yeah, those were the Memphis riots of 1866. Courtney, what is your perk of the week? So my perk of the week is that for the past few weeks, my littlest kitty. Um, I guess she's an adult cat now. She's three now. So I can't really call her a kitten anymore. She's She's still your baby. She's still my baby. Um, (laughs) She'd been a little sick. Um, She had some issues, um, wasn't really acting herself. Well, now we have officially discovered that she does have a food allergy and she is back to her normal, healthy self. Um, Just went to the vet today and she said that she looks a lot better. Um, Also last time the vet was like, I think she has a heart murmur, which I've never heard and was like, excuse me, what? But she said she didn't hear any trace of it. And those can kind of come out when they're sick or scared. Mm -hmm. And she was like kind of scared at the vet. So I think being sick and being scared might've triggered that. Um, But she said that looks good. And so now I'm on the hunt to find cat food that doesn't have fish meal in it because apparently they just hide fish meal in there everywhere interesting and apparently those aren't good for cats like fish foods because they're land animals so they're traditionally eating like you know rats Mm. stuff like that they're not usually eating like a salmon (laughs) or like a fish and I did read also like the fish meal is usually just like the disgusting leftover part from the seafood industry but Apparently every freaking dry cat food has fish meal in it. So now I'm on the hunt to find one that doesn't. (laughs) Um, Yeah, we have to get, um, I don't know if it's dry food 
has that or not. So, so our cat was getting really bad UTIs and like tons of like crystals in his urine and everything. And so we had to put him on a special like urinary tract dry food. And then they also said to avoid anything fish related because it's really bad mm-hmm. for that. So we use like a wet food that's only like chicken or beef or whatever, but I'll have to see if, it, if, you know, she wants some urinary tract dry food. I don't know, but he's been on it and hasn't had any problems with the UTI. So I don't know. I'll have to check the ingredients for you. Yeah. Um, I'd never even known it because we were just getting food that said chicken on it. And then she was like, yeah, it'll just hide it. And I did notice that it's like middle of the way down, like fish meal. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you're saying this is just chicken. Why are you putting fish in this? So, um, found a few good options. Hopefully she'll eat them. She is supposed to be on only canned food for the next two months. And our older cat is not happy about <laughs> not being able to free eat. So just be yeah. thinking about the Ebro household because <laughs> it's been rough y'all. It's been rough. I guess some struggles <laughs> going on there. <laughs> But she is back to her normal self. She's got energy again. She's being annoying. I'm sure you've heard her in the background scratching away at shit, but I'll take it for her to be healthy again. Cause I was genuinely scared. It was something majorly wrong. I can handle a food allergy. (laughs) It's so, it's so sad. Like when your fur babies are sick, cause you're like, I don't know what's wrong with you. I don't know how to help Mm -hmm. you. Like what, you know, speaking of, um, being scared at the vet, we took our cat to the vet last week for his checkup. And he is just so traumatized by everyone and everything. Like they literally could not even get him out of his kennel because he was just hissing and clawing and whatever. So we had to drug him tonight. So he gets like part of it, the the drug tonight, and then part of the drug in the morning. And then we drop him off for the full day. So that that still isn't enough, then they can further sedate him to do his annual checkup and his shots. So that's pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. Nova, she's good at the vet, but she was breaking my heart because she was trembling. Like she was scared. And I was like, I'm so sorry, baby. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, Nova kind of, not Nova, Luna kind of hisses, but she's, she's all bark, no bite. Usually yeah. like she's normally just like hissing at everyone, but it's like really rare that she'll actually like attack. So yeah. yeah there. I wonder too, because Kobe, like Kobe likes me and sometimes a few other people and that's pretty much it mm-hmm. but andrew was the one that took him to the vet so i'm like i wonder if like i had been there if it was a more they, yeah because you know, he just doesn't not that he, i mean not that he doesn't like andrew but he's not like his favorite they never really bonded and yeah. andrew can yell sometimes and <laughs> cats don't like that <laughs> yes um when uh football basketball soccer video games video you know games. whatever <laughs> yeah um the cat gets a little uh spooked and off he goes and he also mm-hmm. lately he's very he does not want to leave my baby's side he's like right there and then she's like oh kitty and so she like tries to get to him and then he's like he like freaks out I didn't out. say that I didn't say that but then he won't I just want to sit next to you <laughs> yes <laughs> so then he's like down in his like he hasn't like come at her or anything but you can see like him like tensing so I'm like get away from the cat get away from the cat and then he follows wherever I put the baby and I'm like get away from the baby (laughs) cats are funny creatures man but yeah for sure anyway now that that kind of went on a tangent um Jacqueline what is your perk of the week so my perk of the week is that said baby is I guess no longer a baby she just turned one again she'll always be my baby but she just turned one this (laughs) weekend and very bittersweet, um, very exciting, very sad because just a year ago she was my little bitty tiny baby, and now yeah. she's like walking and talking and yelling and you know, just doing all the toddler things. It's such a fun stage though. It's it's mm-hmm. it's always a good time over here. Um, she got a little uh, one of those little tykes cars that Andrew's grandpa got her, so she's it's like Jurassic Park theme too, so it's really cool. Um, So she's loving that. We got her a water table. So she's splashing around in the water. Um, We're going to Tennessee this weekend for her birthday party. Also, sorry. Now, every time we say an episode is short, we just talk forever and make it long. Mm -hmm. We don't mean to. Um, But (laughs) last week in my perk of the week, I gave a preemptive one and y'all, I jinxed it. I just ruined (laughs) it because right Uh after we finished recording, they called me and canceled because my massage therapist was out and it took me like six weeks to get a Saturday appointment anyway. And then now it's another six weeks before I can get back in on a Saturday because I can't take off work and my husband take off work to watch the baby while for me to have a spa day. 
So in July, uh, we'll maybe be able to use my Christmas. And present. you are not going to say it before it happens. No, nope. wait till mm-hmm. after. Yeah. I'm never doing a preemptive perk of the week again. Courtney did it one time and it worked out fine for her, but apparently I don't have that kind of luck. So never again. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a one and done. Like there was one time on this podcast, <laughs> it could happen. I stole it from you mm-hmm. and now it's we're done. We're done with that. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to tell us about your, I don't even, your cats, um, please, your, please send cat pics. <laughs> yes. We love like cat, cat pics, not like cat <laughs> pics. <laughs> your feline creature that lives with you. Yes. Um, your cat pictures, your dog pictures, your baby toddler pictures, you know, I don't know. Tell us about your life. We love it. What was I getting at? Oh yeah, you can do that on Instagram at Caffeinated Crimes Pod on Twitter at Caff Crimes Pod. That's C A F F Crimes Pod. We are on Facebook at Caffeinated Crimes Podcast. You can email us at Caffeinated Crimes Pod at gmail.com and YouTube and TikTok and Patreon. Take it away. Yes, at patreon.com slash caffeinated crimes, you will get a bunch of bonuses. Like I said in last week's episode, we've completely redone the structure and all that. So now if you are a $5 and up Patreon, this episode right here, real uncut raw, my weird faces, my hand motions right now. And while telling my story, cause I can't talk without my hands. So you can see all that $5 and up. We have the video. Mm-hmm. Um, you can hear everything and- that gets edited out of the regular episode mm-hmm. because we, we, we're not great at video editing and, and edit, editing, and we also just don't have the damn time. So you just get the full, like, exactly you know, if happens. some of my favorite podcasts uploaded, like raw unedited, like I would totally listen. Like I would personally <laughs> anyway. So you can get that video. You can have it raw and edited. We have a bunch of bonus episodes. Um, we have a discord, we have a pin and sticker hangouts, you know, the drill, you know, all of it. You You want to give us some money. You want some perks. Don't forget any level throughout the summer, you get to be a part of the Google Google hangout every month. So, um, and you can also review us on Apple and Spotify. That would help us five stars, please. Um, but in the meantime, go have a cup of coffee and don't commit a crime. Mm -hmm.